Hello everyone and thank you for joining our Brook Realty's home buying process workshop and we're going to be sharing our home buyer's guide. My name is Roz B, S. Roz B, otherwise known as Roslyn Booker and I'm the principal broker CEO of our Brook Realty and we're a full service real estate company. We have some pretty amazing core values, three of which are integrity, trust and honor. Service is a lifestyle, and we believe that family and fun is just as important. There are several reasons that people purchase homes. We like to focus primarily on one thing. I believe first time home buyers negate, they forget about, and that is the equity factor. Did you know in some communities they have reaped over 50% market value in 10 to 15 years? Well, what's your why? Home ownership is amazing. It's like a personal savings account. We first and foremost want you to stop making your landlord rich. Yes, it's an American dream, but more than that, it's an equity and it's a wealth builder. Children do better in school when they have somewhere to stay stable. 90% of millionaires become millionaires because they invest in real estate. Let's do some math. If you purchased a home 10 to 15 years ago at 100,000, maybe today you owe 70,000. That would be your mortgage lien. But today, maybe that house is now worth 200,000. Well, once you pay the lien off, which is the mortgage of 70,000 and subtract that 70,000 from the market value, it's leaving you with $130,000. That $130,000 is what we call equity. Equity is defined as your liens minus your market value. And whatever the difference is, is your gross equity. That potentially means that you could be sitting on $130,000. I don't know any other asset or any other investment that would reap that return on that investment other than home ownership. The truth is you have to stay somewhere anyway. You may as well go ahead and pay your own mortgage and not someone else's. We understand that it is a huge commitment and it is a big deal. A lot of people are overcome with fear, but don't worry about that. We have some solutions for your fear. What are you afraid of? Is it the maintenance? Is it remorse, affordability, fear of the unknown? Maybe you're not married. Maybe you're the first one in your family to ever purchase, so you're terrified. Well, let's talk about the maintenance. Did you know that we could negotiate that the seller pay for a one-year home warranty, otherwise known as a service agreement? This service agreement may cover a lot of the concerns that you have, such as your dishwasher, your uh, garbage disposal, maybe your appliances, garage door. Well, are you remorseful? If I coulda, woulda, shoulda. Is the grass greener? on the other, si other side. Affordability. Can I really afford this home in two to three years? Or fear of the unknown. We're in the midst of a pandemic. We could have not imagined being here, but we're here. Maybe you're not married. You're waiting on that knight in shining armor or that perfect princess and your biological clock is ticking and you're getting older. Or again, maybe you're the first one in your family to ever pursue home ownership and it's just too big of an elephant. Well, we're here to simplify the process for you. The reason you need a buyer's agent, someone who is versed and licensed in helping buyers get from number one all the way to number 20. Did you know between that time there's 75 to 100 processes? We call those processes touches. First and foremost, you have to determine your goals and your why. I want to purchase, and that's good. And the second thing, what, is to find the perfect realtor. All right, I'm not 
not going to go through all of these arrows, but obviously you can see there are several other key players involved in the home buying process that have their own layers of processes. That's why your real estate professional will be versed in not only having the expertise, but having a network of preferred professionals that you can work with in order to get you to the closing table. We don't recommend you doing this alone. What can a realtor do for you? Connect you with the best lender, connect you with a network of professionals, help you ascertain and narrow down your wants and needs, be a resource for you, help you get pre-approved for your mortgage loan, schedule the home tours, write the purchase offer, help negotiate the best terms, and get you to closing and get your keys. Now, there are different ways that you can be represented, and there are a few types of real estate professionals we'd like to talk to you about. The first one is a real estate broker. This real estate broker has had additional coursework. They have a brokerage or a company, no doubt, and they're able to have agents under them and they are liable for those agents' actions. Now, most real estate brokers have subscribed to the National Association of, National Association of Realtors, otherwise known as NAR, and every realtor that has subscribed to NAR can use the designation, that little R, you see Realtor, and that's a big deal because those brokers and realtors are held to a higher standard of conducting business. They have a code of ethics, so they really have to be loyal, competent, etc. All right, so maybe someone merely got the accreditation um, and the licensing, but they haven't subscribed to any local or national association. Maybe they are wanting to just flip homes. They're merely a licensee. So I hope we've explained to a degree of your understanding the different types of real estate professionals and how you could be represented. Now in Texas, so such thing as agency laws. And for the sake of this slide, why don't we go to the right side of the page where you see seller, agent two, and broker agency two. Let's just say agent two is Jane Doe, and let's just say broker agency two is called Texas Realty Shop. Well, Texas Realty Shop has a sign in the yard of a lovely home that has Jane's, Jane Doe's name and number on it. Please understand that Texas Realty Shop and Jane Doe have a relationship. Jane Doe has sat down with seller and said, look, I will market your home. I will work in your best interests. However, if there is a particular buyer that will call me from the sign, I'd be happy to show them this property. I'll let them know that I first represent your best interests. Now, if they want to purchase this home and they do not have an agent, I will get permission from you, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, and that particular buyer to operate as an intermediary. That means I have to stand in the middle and I really can't exclusively represent either of you but both of you would agree, and then we can get to closing. Well, that is one type of agency relationship. Now, let's pay attention to the left side, which says buyer, agent one, and broker agency one. Let's just say you are a particular buyer and you wanted exclusive agency from a totally different company than broker agency two. Did you know that most often the seller has already agreed to pay commission to broker agency one and broker agent one to represent buyers exclusively? That's right. So in essence, 
buyers have the opportunity to have exclusive buyer's agency and work for that particular buyer for free until closing. And the reason I say until closing is because no one gets paid, not any broker's agencies, not any agents, the lender, title company, no one gets paid until that buyer closes. So buyers, please don't forego having an exclusive buyer's agent to represent you in every transaction. So enough said about that. If you have questions about this, please chime in, call us, email us, comment, let us know, and we can explain this further. We pretty much covered the type of agency relationship that exists. So we will breeze through this slide. Now, what are the best ways to find realtors or buyer's agents? Ask your friends or relatives for recommendations. That's always the best. Check with a national referral service. Call your local association of realtors. Be sure to interview more than one. And furthermore, check out the realtor's professional record. Do they have re reviews on Zillow, Facebook, LinkedIn? You know, it's not what they say about themselves that count. What have past clients said about them? Are they happy? Are they satisfied? Do they have five-star reviews? This next slide is really important. Pre-qualification versus pre-approval. In every case before buyers start shopping for homes, boots on the ground, you must have a pre-approval letter or a commitment letter from your lender of choice. Now the pre-approval process is a formal process. You will have gone online to complete a loan application. You will provide your proof of income. Depending on the type of employment that you have, you will be required to upload or provide documentation, W-2s, pay stubs, bank statements, or even perhaps your tax returns to substantiate and prove your income. The lender will verify your rental history. They will verify your employment. Maybe they will even ask you to provide some additional documentation or letters of explanation to explain some credit deficiencies, if that exists. Once they have all of this information, you will either be put in an automated system that will provide an automated approval, uh, approval with conditions, or it could be a manual approval where your file, and I do mean paper file, would have to be sent to an underwriter for review. Once that happens, the lender can issue a letter proving that you have been through the process and they have verified your assets and your credit. Why this is crucial is in a competitive market, which we still are in, sellers want to know that they're working with a bona fide qualified buyer. Otherwise, they're not going to take your offer serious. A pre-qualification is merely calling a lender, giving them your social, maybe they will pull one bureau, maybe you share with them what your monthly and installment debt equal per month, and they're gonna just give you a verbal of what they think you could be approved for. That doesn't hold weight in the home buying process. Hope we've explained this pretty well, and you understand the importance of getting a pre-approval letter. The other reason you want a pre-approval letter is during that loan application, if you need closing cost assistance or down payment assistance program, that particular lender can comb through their portfolio of loans and accommodate you. So you have to have some skin in the game. And that skin in the game is called upfront out-of-pocket expenses. For instance, if you're purchasing a, 
purchasing a house for 200,000, the earnest money deposit is typically about 1%. Now that's not set in stone, and that's really relative to the pre-existing home market. But let's just say for all practical purposes for this workshop that the home price is 200,000. So 1% equals the amount of the earnest money. So that would be $2,000. During your due diligence period, call it an option period, you would also pay the seller, could range from 100 to 350, could be more or less. This is just an illustration and a range. Let's just say your option money or your option fee is $100. That particular check is made payable to the seller for your unrestricted right to terminate the contract during a set amount of days. So those number of days could be five, it could be seven, it could be 10. Nevertheless, during this option period, you're getting the home inspected. You're determining whether you want to move forward with the purchase of the home. The home inspection is a fee for service. So it is not credited back to you. So if you by chance terminate the contract or we cannot negotiate where the seller can make repairs that you're happy with, you'll have to pay that home inspection fee again if we start the process all over again. That typically runs 350 to 450, depending on if you need a wood destroying insect report as well, okay? Appraisal fee ranges about 450, 575, depending on the type of loan. And the reason we have credited back is it's an upfront fee. The lender will either take a check or credit card. And when the time comes, they will order the appraisal. Now the appraisal should not be confused with the home inspection. Home inspection covers all of your mechanical items, A to Z. The appraisal is a type of inspection conducted by a third party, an appraiser. Now they are out there to determine the market value of the home and to make sure that the condition of the home meets minimum guidelines. Let's move on to survey. If an existing survey does not exist by the seller who have offered the survey, and if it's negotiated that you must pay for the survey as a buyer, typically that ranges from four to $600, depending on the square footage of the property and the amount of land and acreage that the property is on. So if we're dealing again with a $200,000 home, you're gonna need at least $2,300, probably more like $3,000 upfront out of pocket expenses to get the ball rolling. Is this clear? If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please chime in, email us, call us. We'd be happy to explain this further. In searching for a home, we really want you to be honest with yourself. Of course, we know people always have a lot of expectations for their first home. Please understand that sometimes your first home is not your forever home. So be good and easy on yourself and understand that people really stay in their home seven to 10 years the first time they purchase. But have your wants and needs determined. Do you need hardwoods? Do you need quartz? Do you need granite countertops? Or is it merely a desire? Now, you probably need three bedrooms. You probably need a garage. You know, if you have two vehicles and don't want them on the street. So be realistic. Have your wants and needs already determined and written down. Here are some things to consider when you're shopping for a home. Neighborhood, the physical details of the property, the construction details, your major systems. These are some of the 
high level things that you want to consider. A lot of people don't understand that when they are approved for a mortgage loan, many times they can buy any category of these homes that are listed here. Single family residence, town home, condo, or a half or whole duplex. What I'd like to make mention here is that the single family residence is defined as the establishment and the land. You own both. Now for a town home, it's usually a two story unit and you have a demising wall that separates you and your neighbor. You most often will have to pay mandatory homeowners association fees. A condo, you only own what's on the interior of the walls. That's it. But it is still a form of home ownership. Mandatory HOA fees will apply. Now, a half duplex often looks like a home until you get there and understand, gosh, okay, there's two sidewalks and you quickly learn that it looks like a big house but again, you're sharing a common wall or demising wall. So just wanted you to know what the differences were in real estate. When you are approved for a mortgage loan, if your price range affords you to, did you know that you can build you a home from the ground up? Master plan communities are perfect for this. Get with your realtor, let them know you may be interested in a, new, in a new home. New home sales counselors love realtors. You have to be careful though in being proactive. And a lot of times you can be as proactive as you want. You wanna make sure that your realtor knows where you're going so they can get you pre-registered so that they can honor the relationship that you have with your realtor. But the beauty of new construction is no one has lived there. And if you're building, you get to choose the brick, the color of the countertops, the fabrication, uh, carpets, flooring, you name it. It's yours, customized for you. Now, what your realtor is going to do is set you up a search in MLS, Multiple Listing Service. Now, every home that's listed by an owner that has hired a realtor, this particular home is going to be in a huge database called MLS, and it's going to use criteria to search for the perfect home for you. Make sure that your search is broad enough that you don't miss a perfect home only by 10 square foot. For sale by owners, for sale by owners are property owners that have elected not to use the help of a listing agent and they may not be particularly interested in honoring a buyer's agent's commission. But it's always helpful as a buyer uh, if you're not seeing anything in the MLS market or new construction market, you're driving down the street and see a for sale by owner sign please let your realtor know. They can contact them. And if you're a bona fide qualified buyer that has a pre-approval letter, there's a good chance that that for sale by owner would want to honor your relationship with your buyer and pay your commission. Foreclosures. These are homes these are homes that have been foreclosed on. People were not able to make their mortgage and they were either sold at auction or through a bank or another institution. Cash is king. However, if you are eligible or if a particular property is eligible for um, repairs where you have your mortgage and wrap the repairs inside of the particular loan. And one of those loans is called a 203K, an FHA 203K, then you could probably be competitive in bidding on homes that qualify for that type of loan. 
but please understand that when you're up against other investors who usually have deep pockets and pay cash, it's hard to be competitive in today's market um, with purchasing foreclosures. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but nine times out of 10, where you will get bottlenecked is on the repairs. All righty. And there's more information available about uh, different sites that you can go to to keep an eye on and get list of foreclosures. Our job is to make sure as real estate professionals that we put you in a winning position. We want to debunk a myth that a seller will automatically take 10% off. That's a myth, it's a fallacy. We have no way of knowing a seller's motivation. We don't know what their payoff is. So our job is to help you present the highest and best offer the first time so that you can close on your home. There are some things not to do while you're under contract and what not to do while you have your loan in place. Don't change jobs, don't buy a new car or truck. Please don't charge up your credit cards excessively. Keep them below your utilization a limit of 30% or less, okay? Don't spend the money that you've set aside to purchase. Uh, don't tell fibs on your loan application. Don't buy any furniture. Don't go excessively uh, inquiring about other lines of credit, creating inquiries on your credit report. Uh, no mattress money, please get the money in the bank and any large deposits will have to have a paper trail of where it came from. Don't change your bank accounts. And please don't co-sign for anyone on a loan. So how long does it take? So from the time we get under contract, and that means that contract is executed, a quick closing could be 21 days if you have financing. Now, if you're paying cash, you can close in seven to 10 days. But an average closing, if you have financing, is about 30 days. An extended closing is about 45 days. So if you have any questions, please give us a call or comment here. My phone number is 972-996-4702. That's an error here. It's 972-996-4702. My email is Roz, R-O-Z is in zebra, booker at rbrookrealty.com. That's Roz, R-O-Z is in zebra at rbrookrealty.com. That's A-R-B-R-O-O-K realty.com. We hope that you have enjoyed this presentation and we look forward to serving your real estate needs. Bye-bye.